Me, myself, I have the furthest I've gone with tabletop is uh, Monopoly and Milton Bradley stuff. So we're talking more advanced stuff here. We're talking more, um, you know, better looking boards, better looking uh, pieces, all that stuff. I've, I've seen stuff y'all posted on the website and I'm like, yeah, that's some pretty beautiful sculpting and pieces that these things have even the dice i'm like oh yeah that's that's some nice dice i want a dice and i don't i don't even have did, did you hear that game. rob you said the m word yeah what? i heard it oh gosh did i <laughs> did i do something wrong <laughs> Welcome to the Gaming Trend Podcast, the official podcast of GamingTrend.com. My name is Anthony Shelton, and I am joined by Mike Dunn. How's it going? And Rob Berg. What up? This, on this podcast, we typically talk about the biggest games of the week, and we also talk about the games in our backlog that we should have played a long time ago, and the games that you need to play. But we're going to do something a little bit different this week. GamingTrend.com is not just a website about video games. It covers tabletop, it covers tech, it covers gaming accessories, we cover a lot of different things. And so today... We got Mike Dunn and Rob Berg here to help us cover tabletop because there's an event happening and it's not PAX and it's not Gamescom. It's something very important to tabletop, very big, a comparison that could be made to even E3. It is Gen Con 2022. That is happening very, very soon. Now you might say, Anthony, Anthony, I'm here for the video games. So am I. That's why I do the podcast. But, again, GameTron.com is more than that. And let me tell you, the reason why I haven't been much of a tabletop person is because I haven't been exposed to it. I got some friends who play tabletop, but I haven't had the chance to play with them. I bet you, if I played with them, the idea of sitting down with a friend, drinking, eating, having a good time, playing this physical game that y'all are joking and laughing about, sounds like a great time. So, give it a chance. Give it a chance. Let them show you some awesome tabletop games because this will be the time where we get to see some pretty dope stuff. But before we get into all the physical games, the tabletop games, Mike, can you tell us what in the world Gen Con 2022 is? Well, Anthony, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I couldn't say that with a straight face. Yeah. Uh, no, now Gen recording. Con. Yes, yeah, so, I, I know. Uh, so yeah, so Gen Con is the biggest tabletop gaming convention in North America, in the Western Hemisphere, really. Uh, the only one that's bigger is uh, Spiel in uh, Essen in Germany, and that one's bockers big. But we're just talking about Gen Con. Uh, this is the 55th year of Gen Con. Um, wow. We're about 70,000 attend uh, on its uh, on on a good year. It's a little different this year uh, and last year because of course the pandemic changed everything for everybody. All conventions right. had to scale back and do different things. But uh, Gen Con was founded by Gary Gygax, the guy who created Dungeons and Dragons years and years ago before oh. he even before he even uh, came up with Dungeons and Dragons with uh, Dave Arneson. So it's been going for a while. It is uh, deeply rooted into tabletop in the U.S. And uh, they call th there's a reason why they call it the best four days in gaming. Um, every major player in the tabletop space uh, in the U United States, uh, in the Western Hemisphere, overseas, like we have, uh, we have people come in from all over the world showing off new games, new gaming gear, um, and just uh, everything from board games, dice games, role playing games, you name it. It is just a blast. Probably one of the most enjoyable times I've had uh, doing this all these years. Nice. Yeah, that's that sounds really cool. Uh, so, all right. First of all, I didn't know that the creator of Dungeons and Dragons created the convention. That is actually pretty wild, and that it's been going for fifty plus years. That's 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 pretty established at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, E three can't say that, can they? No, <laughs> especially no, after it... these last few years. Um, but yeah, uh, it, actually, there is a very I I do compare it to E three quite a bit, uh, just in terms of scale and how important it is in the sphere. Yeah. 
Um, but it is very different in that it is very consumer focused. Uh, people can go and buy games that uh, aren't even going to be out on the shelves for a few months. Um, oh, that's sweet. People can buy Kickstarter editions, um, demo games that uh, aren't going to be out for a long time. Uh, they can demo games with game designers themselves. They have like whole areas where you can go and try out games uh, that independent designers and developers are making. Um, and um, they also have like a huge auction uh, where you can bid on used games and, and like old school stuff from like back in the day. Uh, I myself have gotten like a few really old games in previous years uh, from the auction. And, uh, and there's tons of events like, you know, there's gaming going basically on 24 seven. It's, it's wild. For yeah, I'm not going to harp on the four days. Yeah, <laughs> four days. Yep. I'm not going to harp on this uh, Gen Con E3 comparison too much, but it, with E3 going through its own change and uh, with Reed Pop taking over and things like that, I feel like with some of the consumeristic focus that Gen Con seems to have, with being able to sell, you know, buy stuff that's not even out yet, different things like that, I feel like. If E3 took advantage of some of those ideas, maybe not necessarily bringing all the consumer stuff into the show, because I personally don't want all the consumerism inside the show, but that's me personally. They can make it work great. But that sounds like a really cool idea. Like you, you can go there, you see new stuff, you can even get stuff you can't get hands on. That, that sounds like something consumers would want, you know, <laughs> like I've bought yeah. this exclusive thing. You ain't got this. Like I remember going to Japan and playing Tekken seven before it was out, out in the West. Right. right. And I felt special, <laughs> you know, oh, it was yeah. like, oh, I've yeah. played this before everybody else in the arcade in Japan. So awesome. that's a really cool feeling. Go ahead, Rob. I was saying that's awesome, man. Going to yeah. Japan to play Tekken. That's, that's oh awesome. yeah. It was fantastic. All right, yeah, so I, I would say it's probably uh, probably the best comparison would be that it's kind of a mixture of e of what E three has been in the past uh, in terms of hype and uh, who's there uh, on the publisher side of things and the developer side of things, um, but with with sort of that like uh, um, uh, community of of like a PAX convention, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's like those two things kind of mashed together. And uh, I love PAX. I love E3. But Gen Con is, is special. Very special. It, it sound, for real, it sounds special. So what, what kind of stuff are we going to expect from U2 for Gaming Trend? What kind of coverage are we going to get? So uh, we, we are actually very lucky this year in that we usually they only give us two press badges um, for the entire show. And uh, this year we've got four people going, so we have twice the manpower on our away team, <laughs> and I'm I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. We're gonna do, uh, we're gonna have more content uh, posted more often. Like right now, I have about uh, coming up on thirty meetings scheduled over four days that the four of us are gonna have to attend. We're going to be filming, we're going to be uh, taking notes, we're going to be demoing games. So expect a ton of previews, a ton of interviews. And um, unlike in past years where we just basically were nonstop meetings and like uh, getting hands on and we'd have to take all of this raw content and, and hammer it back at home. Yeah. Yeah, um, we're gonna we're gonna make a really really uh, strong effort to get more content posted, um, probably primarily on the YouTube channel, just because uh, I'm I'm gonna be able to uh, push out a lot of video content pretty quickly, uh, I think, and yeah, and then we'll just be pushing uh, Gen Con content, uh, previews, interviews, uh, demos, uh, hands on impressions, that sort of thing. Uh, going going forward, probably for several weeks uh, after the show's over. But we're really awesome. going to try to get a bunch of content up during the show in a timely fashion. And uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm excited to know what the best of stuff is. You know, uh, just, a, yes. just a nice chunk article, video, whatever. It's just like, this is what Anthony should play. You ain't never played tabletop before. This is what you should be paying attention to. 
are we going to get something like that? We are. Uh, now, this is something right. we start. We did something. Uh, we started something. I guess about eight or nine years ago, uh, we started handing out awards at E3. And last year, uh, the first year Gen Con was back. Uh, it was kind of a scaled down version of Gen Con, but um, I I wanted to do something special, so I came up with these awesome physical awards. Ooh. These nice. are the actual awards that we handed out last year. Okay. And yeah, like um, and basically, it, we we don't do any categories. We don't like do any preconceived anything. It's just if we see something like on the spot that we just think is awesome, then we're going to hand them an award and we're going to write about it and do a best of article. Um, and um, last year, that was everything from uh, like the best box art to uh, the most exciting like Kickstarter that was going on during the time because uh, a lot of board games get kickstarted um, and, uh, and and it, it was just it was a, a success like all the way around like uh, publishers and designers loved it uh, we loved it and it was super fun so we're gonna do that again this year and I actually yeah. have the new awards that we're gonna be handing out right here. So this hey. is the new, oh, again, yeah. we've got four different designs. In front of the dice, yeah. 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 Like the shine it, looks good. Yeah. The colors well, are nice blend on them. Some yep. solar action. Okay, I like this. I like this. Now, the, we've got our uh, 20 years yeah. logo here. Uh, because, yes, Gaming Trend is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year, if you didn't know that already. Um so yeah, we're we're super excited about that. I've actually had a few publishers when they've set up meetings with us this year uh, ask us, "Hey, are you doing that best of Gen Con thing again this year?" And it's like, yes. As awesome. uh, as they used to say on the ATM, I love it when a plan comes together. Um, <laughs> yes. So, um, so yeah, that's that's what we're doing. Uh, expect that. Uh, you'll probably, if you, if you watch social media during the show, you'll probably see people posting that they just got an award, um, and expect to see those kind of rolled up into an article, uh, probably within about a week or two after we get back, if I can help it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Sweet. Well, now that you got more man manpower should hopefully be a little easier. Yes. Now, me, myself, I have the furthest. I've gone with tabletop is uh, Monopoly and Milton Bradley stuff. So we're talking more advanced stuff here. We're talking more, um, you know, better looking boards, better looking uh, pieces, all that stuff. I've I've seen stuff y'all posted on the website, and I'm like, yeah, that's some pretty beautiful sculpting and pieces that these things have. Even the dice, I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's some nice dice. I want a dice, and I don't I don't even have. That's did you hear that, game. Rob? You said the M word. Yeah, what? I heard it. Oh gosh, did I <laughs> did I do something wrong? So uh, Monopoly is is uh, well, like mm. think of what is what is what is the video game that that like when someone says they play video games and then you, they say what video game they play and you're just like, oh, oh okay, yeah, Madden. Well, I, let me let me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the other M. Yes, yes. Don't don't worry, Anthony. We, we if we get in the same place sometime, we'll uh we'll introduce you. We'll, we'll yeah. We'll, we'll show you yeah. what's good. I'm just being real, you know. Yeah. I you know I I gotta keep it real. But there are some games y'all two are excited about um that are much sophisticated and much better than Monopoly. So let's let's talk about those. Um, I see one on this list. One called Harrow County. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but yes. uh, Rob, talk to us about Harrow County. Um, uh, actually, uh, you probably want to talk to me about Harrow yeah. County. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Um, no, um, Harrow County. All right. So let me back up. Harrow County is a game that isn't coming out until next year. Um, okay. But the designer, um, Jay Cormier, uh, who also designed one of my favorite games from last year, Mind Management. Uh, he runs a, uh, a a publishing company, an independent publishing company called Off the Pages. It's Off the Pages, right, Rob? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Um, and what he does is he focuses on 
uh, comic books, like independent comic books, uh, and and uh, using independent comics as a theme for board games. And uh, mind management was such a good job of adapting the comic book mind management into a um, hidden movement board game that um, that he's been on my radar ever since. And uh, Rob and I actually got to talk to him and uh, demo this game, Harrow County, in a very early form at uh, Gamma Expo in March. Uh, Gamma Expo is a... Uh, is a uh, uh, it's a retailer focused uh, convention, yeah. uh, but it's much smaller than, than Gen Con or PAX or even E3. Um, and, uh, and it was, a, it's a great, it's a great little game and it has this cool little uh, conceit of uh, having a sort of a dice tower built into the lid of the box. And what you do is you put these little cubes in the top and they, some of them come out of the little hollow of the tree that's on the cover of the box. Um, and uh, some of them don't. But it's, it's basically a mechanic in the game. And it ties in perfectly with the comic. Which, uh, unlike last time when I got to play the game, I have read the comic. It's a brilliant comic. I can't recommend it highly enough. It's a fantastic uh, kind of... It's about like witches and... And uh, uh, it starts off kind of being about witches and like the spirits that they conjure to help them. And then it completely mm. like turns on its ear and becomes something completely original and new by the end of the series. And um, I can't wait to look at a more completed version of this game. Uh, and I've talked to Jay and uh, he's going to give us a hands on demo and uh, show us all of the new components that he's gotten from the factory. So super, nice. super excited about that one. So you said you've played it before, right? Uh, yes, I played it at Gamma. It's, um, it's, it's more or less a one versus one game uh, with the... Right. Uh, uh, there's a, a possibility to add a third player as like a, uh, a, a different faction, but you're basically choosing factions. Uh, you've got some uh, area control. And um, you're depending on which faction you are. You it, it's very asymmetrical. So depending on which faction you are, you have a different uh, goal to uh, uh, win the game. Um, so like the family of uh, is one of the factions, and they're like a family of like witches, and they want to destroy Harrow County. Uh, and then you have Emmy, who's the main character of the comic. And her band of haints, which are the the spirits that she's conjured, who are trying to protect Harrow County. Uh, so that's that's more or less how it is. And now that I've like I hadn't read the comic when I played it the first time, and it, I it was like I was literally going into it completely green, and uh, uh, really enjoyed playing the game. So that's great. Now I can't wait to see it. Now that I know what the theme's about. And I think that's the thing I like about Jay so much is that he has now introduced me to two amazing comic series. Um, and I'm probably just going to straight up ask him what he's reading <laughs> when I see him at the show, uh, yeah. because I'm always looking for good reading material. Now, as a just I don't want to tutorialize this too much because I don't you know, I want to I want to respect the the tabletop fans, but how do you I guess how do you play a game you've already played in the form of tabletop like are you playing a new version with new rules is it now just looks better because you know in video games you can play an early version of something and it completely changes in the beta how, do, how yeah. does that work with tabletop real quick honestly it happens in a much the same way um, okay and uh, but usually, usually uh, initially, you're dealing with like placeholder components or oh, yeah. like placeholder art. Um, and in a in a tabletop game, um, for for a lot of games, especially a lot of modern games, theme is a huge part of it. Theme is like you know, um, a, a Star Wars game is has a theme of Star Wars, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, it's. 
you have to like be able to kind of abstract a little bit if you're playing it earlier on an earlier prototype uh because uh, maybe some of the things that really kind of uh, immerse you in the theme aren't in place yet. Like, Got it. Yeah. You know, cool minis or like, um, like the special dice tower. He didn't have that ready. He just had a mock-up of it. And he's like, this is what it's going to look like. And I was like, that's cool. He has yeah. it now. So, um, yeah, okay. So yeah, it's uh, typically by the time we see a game um, and this isn't always true, but it's mostly true. Uh, 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 the rules are about hashed out 90%. Okay. Um, yeah. And usually it's just like, you know, balance tweaks, that sort of thing. You know, uh, it's, it's like, a it's, it's, it, I guess the best way to compare it uh, for you would be, it's like, it's not the, it's not quite the gold master, but it's, it's getting pretty close. Yeah. For like a video game, right? It, yeah. It's like when uh, games go into PCRs, which are public test realms, like, you get the little bit of finishing details before it's fully ready to come out and actually realized. That, that makes that's sense. How I'd compare it. No, yeah, that, is, that makes sense. Which is still better than most Steam early access games. Yeah. This is very true. <laughs> All right, Sorry, Rob. I had, to get, I had to get that burn in. <laughs> All right. Rob, tell us about uh, a tabletop game you can tell us about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's a. Uh... There's, man, there's so much that just is continually coming down the pipe, coming out. Um, you just, sometimes developers just drop you, drop bombs on you. And you're like, oh, man, I had no idea this guy was even working on something new. Right. They just came out with something. Yeah. So, like, for me, one of, one of the big ones, and I know it's a big one for Mike and couple other guys as well it's called sky mine one of one of the bigger uh bigger game designer names out there is this guy alexander fister um he designed yep you know, he designed some some great games man uh they've got thing he's got games such as like uh great western trail you've got maracaibo cloud age boon lake among many others and uh Sky Mines is his newest one coming to Gen Con, and I couldn't be more excited. Um, I own, I own three of those four Fister games that I told you about. Um, Great Western Trail, the one I don't own. That's there's a there's a whole uh, um, world series of board games happening in Vegas in September, and that's one of the board games being played as part of the world series of board games. So it's like. Wait, is that like cool. a competitive thing? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people signed up for it. Everybody's showing competitive up. Competitive tabletop? Let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, man. It's it's real cool. People okay. are real serious. Speaking um, my language. It's it's, <laughs> it's getting real big, man. Um, but they're, they're pulling some of these, some of the biggest games, Great Western Trail. It happens to be one of them, and by this guy making Sky Mines. So okay. Sky Mines, from what I know, is, the, is another Euro by Alexander Pfister and you know, it's got space theme to it and that's man, it's just I can't I can hardly wait to see it in person at Gen Con. Have you do you know any of the I nah, lack of a better way to put it, uh gameplay details that you're able to give us? I don't know any of the gameplay details. Mike Mike. Um, actually I don't, uh, but, uh, <laughs> so it's just one of those, like, we're going to, we're going to go there and, and learn more about it. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it's, it's okay. like, this is, this is kind of a, like, I, I think it was just announced like last week or the week before. Am I right? Yeah, two, three weeks, two, three weeks ago. Top. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is yeah. fresh. Yeah. Totally fresh. Um, okay. and, and when Rob says Euro, uh, Rob, why don't you, why don't you explain to Anthony yeah. what, what a Euro style game is? So. Uh, there's there's a lot of different uh, terminology and types of games out there in tabletop space. You have things from like uh, worker placement. You have um, uh, what's the word? I'm I can't think of the word. I'm the game I'm trying to think of. Uh, but it, you, you have other things like aside from worker placement, you have hidden movement. Uh, 
there's so many different types. Uh, Euro kind of kind of kind of build your own little engine, like an engine builder game, which kind of like generate your resources, you generate your income throughout the entire it's game. The RTS of tabletop. Yeah, yeah, yeah just a bit. Euro. Okay. Is, yeah, I, I would say RTS of tabletop is kind of accurate. Yeah, okay. with one with one caveat though, I, I think probably the most um, the 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 most prominent feature of a Euro Euro game is that they don't feature a lot of uh, player versus player activity. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. it's yeah. kind of like you're playing in parallel, and typically you're going for points, and um and if there's any player interaction, it's fairly minimal. Um, and uh, some some people like that a lot. Some people are like, no, I want to, I, I'm bloodthirsty, I want to kill, kill, kill. Um, yeah. <laughs> which is totally understandable. There's many games out there to satisfy that. Uh, <laughs> yes. <Definitely not. laughs> Rob, Rob well, actually, I believe, uh, Rob, you're, you're a big Euro guy, aren't you? When I you, love you. Yes. I love Euros, engine builders, worker placement. I like that kind of stuff where everybody feels like they can play the game and be in the game and not taken out of that experience while you're playing. Like I want people in my personal life, I want people to sit and enjoy a game and play and be like, oh man, this theme's cool. Oh, this, this experience is cool. I'm having so much fun. I'm making new friends. I'm having this great time. What I don't want, and this is why I don't like the, the other like area control, we're going to... F- 1v1 pvp kind of thing type games is because it just it a tabletop game takes anywhere usually from 30 minutes to three four hours sometimes and in those sure. longer experiences if you're taking out at hour one and it's a four hour game you're kind of wasting your time the rest of those hours and i don't want people to be sour on that time i want people to just enjoy everything they're experiencing yeah if that were me that'd be together. the time where i'm just going to take all the chips and just, i'm just going to eat everything and drink everything like yeah <laughs> yeah y'all, exactly. go, y'all gonna have to suffer in some way exactly <laughs> now now i'm not I, that was a bad joke i was going to make a hero as in the sandwich <laughs> joke but I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go oh, there gosh <laughs> no <laughs> but euro does sound like a a type of game I would want to play also one that you're continually in and it, it sounds yeah. almost cooperative. I like that um, kind of stuff. It, it, it's more like a kind of like a best in show. Like everybody has okay. access to all okay, of yeah. the same avenues of gameplay, of choices, of how you're getting your money, your resources, cards, how you're moving around maps, everything like that. Everybody has access to it. It's up to everybody how they play their game. And so at the end of the game is when everybody's like, oh, hey, here's what I scored because I did all this. And maybe you did something different than me, and so you scored a little differently. But you still scored an amount of points that's competitive with me. So it's competitive, but everybody's still kind of playing their own strategies, their own game with a little In less. In simple terms, yeah. It's yeah. everybody's fishing. And yeah. everybody's doing their own thing, and then who's got the biggest fish? Exactly, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So, so to kind I of like loop it back around to uh, Sky Mines, uh, Fister is probably one of the hottest names in uh, Euro style games uh, right now. Um, yeah. Pretty much every one of his games has been a big hit, uh, not only here in the U.S. but very much so in Europe. Okay. Um, and uh, this is what we do know about Sky Mines right now is, uh, in regards to the theme, is that uh, you are mining the moon for precious commodities and mm. um, investing in promising companies who are sponsoring uh, this. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, you're basically playing as an investor. Um, and uh, look, it looks like there's going to be some worker placement in terms of like you know people who are mining, and then some uh, some some other uh, mechanics involved around what kind of corporations you're dealing with, and what kind of bonuses and special actions you can get 
uh, when you ally yourselves with these corporations. Um, and nice. uh, yeah, so uh, it it looks cool. It looks cool. Um, I'm definitely nice. looking forward to it. Awesome. All right. Somebody talk to me about Return to Dark Tower Covenant. Oh, okay. Long name. All right. I'll, I got this one. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, all right. A uh, little, little uh, quick backstory on Dark Tower. Dark Tower is actually a classic Milton Bradley game from like 1980, oh. 81, right? <laughs> really? Yes. Uh, it was one of the first board games that had like an electronic component, a literal tower in the middle of the board and that interacted with you as you played the game. Uh, I okay. had it when I was a kid. It was cool as shit it was amazing i played it like three times and then my sister lost like half the pieces and i, I it just became junk <laughs> after that um a couple of years ago a few, uh, two or three years ago uh restoration games restoration games is a company that likes to take old games and dust them off and give them a new kind of uh, uh breathe new life into them um they do Restore this store uh, them it sounds like Yes, exactly. Hence the name Restoration Games. Uh, one of their biggest uh, uh, hits is the Unmatched series, which is actually based off of an old Star Wars uh, Jedi Duels board game from the early 90s. And they basically took that concept and said, what if we made this like uh, Bigfoot versus Sinbad? Or, um, <laughs> you know, they, if they could franchise it uh, and have Ghost Rider versus Daredevil. Um Dr. Sattler from Jurassic Park Park versus the T-Rex. Yes, yeah, yeah. these are all characters that you can play in that game and uh it's just it's it's a great it's a great like 1v1 uh 2v2 kind of skirmish game. But that but Return to Dark Tower is their version of Dark Tower. They couldn't make it they couldn't get like the full rights for the old game. Um, so they just basically made their own new game that is kind of like the spiritual successor. And nice. to be completely 100% frank, it's more it's more of a game and it's a better game than the original. The original game was admittedly kind of a gimmick. Um, they did a really good thing. They got Rob Davio, who is uh, one of the owners of Restoration Games, but also one of a, uh, the hottest um, American game designers out there he's designed a lot of stuff for come on games um as well as uh i believe he worked on some of the pandemic he, oh he did pandemic legacy i believe is that right yeah i think he did pandemic I legacy. Check, but i believe so he's worked on a lot of stuff uh he co-owns restoration games and he co-designed that game uh the other designer on that game was isaac childress who designed a game called gloomhaven Gloomhaven uh, basically took the original idea of Dungeons and Dragons from back in the 70s of it being just a dungeon crawler and turned it into a board game, a huge sprawling board game that kind of acts as a legacy game because as you go through it, it changes. So these two guys came together a few years ago and uh, created Return to Dark Tower. And the Kickstarter um, was hugely successful. They had a, uh, a couple of expansions, one of them being uh, miniatures uh, for all of the monsters instead of the cardboard tokens, uh, which uh, um, I can't remember the name. I think it's Dark Alliance or something. No, no, it's the Dark Horde, something like that. Um, and then it also had a first expansion. Oh, well, that was called the Alliance. And that added like two new characters and a new component type, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all of that has been hugely successful and they've decided to come out with a new, um, also not only do a second printing of the core game because lots of people didn't get it the first time around. And it's not, it's not the kind of game that you would find in uh, game stores very easily. Um, um, cause it's very expensive. Uh, electronics, big tower. Um, <clears throat> But uh, they uh, they have a new a new expansion for it uh, called Covenant, and this adds four new characters uh, and a whole bunch okay. of new mechanics, and kind of like basically takes a lot of the core ideas of the game and ramps it up 
to 11. It is currently on Kickstarter. So you can go out and kickstart that game right now if you wanted. Um, even even all of the uh, the stuff that came out in the last Kickstarter to go with the, the new uh, expansion. Um, we have scheduled some uh, a, an actual game demo of the expansion. Uh, nice. we'll, uh, um, I'm going to try to have Ellis Zimmerman, who wrote our review of Return to Dark Tower and the uh, first expansion, uh, working on that. And um, I intend to get that on film. Uh, we also have a an interview lined up with Rob Davio. Uh, so I'm going to be asking about that and a bunch of other cool restoration stuff that's in the pipeline. Nice. But um, I got to play a prototype of the core game at PAX Unplugged in 2019, right before the pandemic hit. And um, it, I, it was, I had a blast. It was amazing. And um, it, it's, it's a good game. It's, uh, it's definitely, it's very, it's app driven. It's one of those, there's a whole new kind of wave of games that use uh, like, um, like an iOS or Android app to help, kind of guide you along or add some variability into the game. Uh, This is one of them. Yeah. And it's really cool because they've actually been making balancing tweaks in the app that impact the game. So probably one of the closest things to like a patch that, uh, that the tabletop uh, (laughs) world has seen so far. Um, But uh, it's, it's it's very much like the original in that you kind of start it's a circular board with the tower in the middle and you're kind of amassing your power to try to attack the uh the bad guy who has taken over the dark tower um Mm. it's beautiful uh just very well designed restoration is one of my favorite uh companies out there they uh basically they're one of like two companies that i pretty much just get their games regardless uh because i know it's it's going to be fun at least to play at least once (laughs) usually usually it's going to be fun to play more than once though um and then of course you know i i definitely got hooked by the nostalgia of it because i did have that original game when i was a kid and i wish i could have played it more and now i have the new one and it's a much better game so there you go and you get both yeah play it again and play it in a better form oh yeah Exactly, exactly. So, cat's out the bag. Uh, we, in our last episode, we reviewed and talked about Stray, which David Burdett gave a 90. So, that was a fantastic game. Going to talk video oh, games wow. for a half a second. It was a great game, according to David Burdett. But, <laughs> there's a... There's... I've been playing it, like, I've been trying to get a little time in here and there uh, as I've been getting ready for Gen Con. Um, How do you... F- how do you feel about it? I love it. I'm a cat person though, so no, I'm totally, there you go. totally biased. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So the so yeah, cat's out the bag on that one. But there's apparently a game called Cat in the Box. So we're gonna take the cat that was out the bag and put it back in the box, apparently. Yeah. Talk about Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Cat in the I can't the it's backwards on my screen, but <laughs> <laughs> what is uh what is cat in the box? Uh, Cat in the Box is a game developed by, uh, not developed, uh, published by a company called Bezier Games. Um, it's really not a big game, which is kind of one of the cool things. Uh, one of the things you talked about earlier with pieces and games getting all fancy and, and high tech now that they're not Monopoly style games, but they don't have to be fancy. There's still a lot of low lower budget kind of easy games to play that you can essentially take like 10 minutes to get through the rules and learn one of those games is cat in the box i got to see this at origins game fair in uh june something like that (laughs) it's been it's been a couple of years (laughs) yeah Uh, i guess we're all missing uh, august aren't we yeah 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 it's kind of crazy but no, uh, I saw this. I got to play this at Origins Game Fair, um, and I'm excited to see what Bezier has has in store for Gen Con because it was probably one of the top three biggest games at Origins Game Fair. 
And essentially what the whole game is, is um, there's a whole style of games called trick-taking games. Um, and you're essentially completing, it's, it's kind of like completing a mission almost. You have to take certain, everybody plays a card, and then whoever plays the uh, X or Y card of this set wins that trick and takes the takes the cards that everybody played in that round. Oh, and, sounds like spades. Yeah, yeah, it spades is a trick taking game. Yep, hundred percent trick taking game. But yep. uh, other other games have taken that and kind of put their own spin on it. One of them is Cat in a Box. Um, so you have everybody has cards that they can play um but everybody can only play every number in a suit once in the whole game once you've done that you can't play it anymore oh yeah so it gets a little harder a little thinkier a little trickier but uh once you play once you play a set a card in a set and say you win that set you get to place your piece on that number and that on that set and on this board and by con- by chaining multiple of your pieces together, you score a lot more pe- uh, a lot more points, and kind of how their their whole their whole gimmick works for this game. And uh, one of the big things that they did for Origins was I don't I can't remember if they were I don't think they were actually selling them, but they had a bunch of stuffed cats as kind of like the aesthetic for Cat in the Box to kind of draw people in, and so. People were showing up. People were getting these quick demos and playing through it in like 10 minutes tops, and everybody was allowed to go through it pretty quick. They sold out of every copy they brought to Origins <laughs> every morning within like 30 minutes tops. Wow. Yeah. So, so uh, Anthony, I, I'm going to flip my flip my video source because my shirt is actually very relevant. It's Schrodinger's cat. Cat in the box is referencing Schrodinger's cat. Have you ever heard of the Schrodinger's cat theory? I have not. Okay, the Schrodinger's cat theory is a theory in quantum physics. Um, I can't remember the scientist who came up with the theory, um, but (laughs) the theory basically goes like this. If you put a cat in a box, and this box is designed to randomly um, like release a gas pellet that kills the cat, or randomly choose not to release it, then mathematically at a, at, at a given point at, at a certain given point during a, a period of time in which uh, that pellet is pellet is either going to activate or not activate and kill that cat. The cat is both alive and dead at the same time. Okay. Um, so I think I, metaphorically, I can understand this. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So the, I, the, the conceit behind cat in the box uh, and, and it's the mechanic that I'm the most interested in checking out is that, uh, yes, it is a trick taking game, but apparently the player chooses what suit their card is as they're playing uh, it. So it's, okay. it's not like the cards have a, have a specific suit. You actually choose the suit. So I think that's how it kind of ties into the, it can be like two different states at the same time uh, kind of thing. So, but I'm a, I'm a huge, huge nerd when it comes to the Schrodinger's cat theory. I, I think it's, it's one of the, the most interesting scientific conundrums that I've heard in my lifetime. <laughs> um, and I've read some quite humorous books on the matter, but I'm really curious to see this game. Cause it looks like a good fun, like kind of lighthearted game, uh, easy, easy to pick up, easy to get to the table. Um, and, uh, it looks like it's pretty easy to teach too, which is a big deal. Sometimes I have one question though. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Rob. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Can you put an actual, not an actual cat, but do you put a cat in the box? Cause the only thing I'm thinking about right now is I want a metal gear solid cat. Like that's, that's what I'm thinking about when I think nice. of the cat in the box. If you can't put the cat in the box, I just feel like that's a missed opportunity. I would say probably the uh, the only thing that I can say to that is that I've seen the size of the box of the game, and I'm pretty sure my cat cannot fit in that box. Do they even have like cat figurines though? <laughs> no, they, they do not. No, it's, no uh, cat. Okay, all yeah. right. No, no so Metal Gear Solid cat for me. A, a card game, right? 
yeah, it's strictly a card game. It's got a few little pieces for the board that everybody's scoring on. Right. But that's kind of about it. There's not much to the game, which I think is one of the best parts about it is because it's, like, like Mike said, it's simple. Everybody can kind of learn it in five or ten minutes. It's easy to put on the table and put away. Just stuff like that is kind of, they're good, they're good gateway games, so getting people into the hobby. And they're also good games just for good fun. It yeah. sounds like a gateway game. Uh, this, so far, is the one that I'm most interested in. I like it's spades cool. a lot. I'm very good at spades, especially with my wife. So <laughs> this is, the, yeah, this, this sounds great. It would be nice, though, if, you know, after you win a trick, like, I could put a box on somebody else's cat. Like, that just be fun. <laughs> just just right. to rub it in. Ha! Put well, I'll tell, I'll your tell cat you what, in the box. Anthony, I'll tell you what, Anthony. We'll try to get you a copy while we're there. How about that? <laughs> sure. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. All right, I'll let's talk much. about... I'm... Oh, go Wait. ahead, Rob. I was nope. just I'm not a cat person. Never have been. Neither am I. I'm, aller- I'm allergic to cats. The cat initially, like, was like, eh, I don't need to necessarily go check that out. He's like, other a people, dog in a box. Yeah, other people that are here <laughs> with me can go check it out. Not my, not my, not my jam. I went and played it. A friend of mine was working the booth there, and I'm super excited about this game. I'm upset I didn't try harder to get a copy at Origin. I really want to walk away with a copy for myself at least <laughs> oh, at yeah. Gen Con. I can. Only imagine it's gonna sell out so quick. So is it just to just to be clear for everybody listening? Also, is this a complete finished game, or is there going to be an update of some sort? Or because oh, yeah, when, when we game. talk about yeah, when we talk about just games we're excited to see at Gen Con, this is just one that's already done, and you guys are just excited to to just plain out see it. Yes, yeah, it's fin- maybe it's even finished. buy it. They um. It doesn't actually come out, I think, till the fall. Yeah, it doesn't but, hit okay. retail until the fall. But um, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, Great. so this happens a lot at Gen Con and at Origins. Is that um, people, uh, the retailer, the not the retailers, the uh, the publishers that are showing at these shows, they try to get some advance product, um, which. Uh, in the last few years has been uh, harder than it has been in the past uh, sure. due to, to supply chain issues and that sort of thing. Um, like last year at Gen Con, there was, it was all stuff that came out like the year before because nobody, because everything was stuck on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Right. You're um, right. <laughs> so, uh, but this, this is definitely done. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure that, I'm, I'm almost positive that they're going to have copies of this on sale. Quite a bit of what we're going to be looking at uh, during the whole show is going to be stuff that is going to be coming out uh, in the coming months or yeah. are, you know, in some cases are like currently a target exclusive, but will hit re- re- other retail stores in the fall sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, no, that that's, and that's the thing. It's like when he's talking about how it's sold out at, at Origins, um, like s- some games just like people, you don't know, you don't always know what they're going to be, but like as soon as the exhibit hall doors open and the, the rushing of the nerds happens, um, <laughs> then, then they, they, uh, the, uh, they start going into lines to like get some of these like convention exclusives or stuff that isn't out for a while yet. And yeah. they basically just, just gobble it all up. Like, like hungry little monsters. And, uh, and then, you know, there's there, I've seen some cases where, uh, like a vendor brought a bunch like a bunch of stuff and they sold out of it in like day one or day two. And then all like for the rest of the con, they just have like a piece of paper hanging up on the wall. that says, yeah. sorry, we're out. We can't. And then like, even their display copy was like someone took, ran away with that. So <laughs> yeah. Goodness gracious. Yeah. All right. Another game y'all are excited to see is undaunted Stalingrad or uh, Stalingrad. Excuse me. Who can tell me about that? 
I think this is one that Nick, uh, Nick Dubs, one of our other editors, uh, is excited about. Um, yep. I don't know too much about it. I know it's World War II themed, obviously. Uh, Sounds like involving. it. Yeah, Stalingrad 1942. Um, it looks like it's, it's a war a, game. It's a war game. It's, it's a deck building game slash bag building slash pool building. So you kind of do things like... Oh, interesting. Deck building is kind of like... Uh, there's a, a public set of cards that you can buy and access, but everybody has the chance to add to their own decks to strengthen their decks throughout the game to make their player essentially stronger and ultimately the victor. Um, usually the cards cost money or you have to defeat something in order to claim a card, things like that. But you kind of, you weed out the weaker cards from your deck that you had at the beginning as you go further into a deck building game and you have the stronger cards. So you might not have uh, like a, a thicker deck of cards, but you strengthen your deck to be the most efficient, to be the best version of itself in order to win a game. So okay. with bag building and pool building, just take that deck building uh, aspect and kind of change it slightly. Bag building, like there's a game I like a lot where they just use um, a bunch of random different colored cubes. And you all throw them into a bag and each turn you pull out a few of the cubes and that determines what you do for the turn. So bag building kind of changes things up like that a little bit versus deck building where you're drawing cards off the top of your own deck and playing based on what you've drawn. And okay. that's kind of what Undaunted is. And like Mike said, it's set in a World War II uh, kind of time frame. Um, it's compared to this it's, other game called Memoir 44 a bit. Um, but it's, it's more or less deck building game, war game. That is supposed to be decently big, according to Nick. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at, uh, at, at some of the information on it right now. And it looks like... Um, it looks like the board is tile based, uh, so there there could be some either variability to it, or like it, you you change the arrangement of the tiles according to a scenario kind of situation. I'm not sure uh, because there's really not that information, not that much information out about it, other than the fact that it re-implements uh, an older game called Undaunted Normandy. Not older; it came out of uh, back in 2019, um, but. Uh, it's it's basically it's basically another it's not like a, an expansion it's a standalone game that uh basically kind of follows the same uh rule set maybe with a few tweaks uh as as a, the previous undaunted normandy game which i haven't played okay sounds well, good but yeah if nick were here he'd probably like Oh, he could tell you all about it yeah he could tell you all about it. <laughs> he, 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 sure. he was trying to talk to me earlier about it and i was like <laughs> I, I know nothing. Who have eyes were glazing over? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Well, this game. We'll see oh, more oh, about it has that. A pseudo, on a... It's a pseudo legacy. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see. That's that's probably something that they added new. That's that's uh, yeah. part of your implementation. So, and we'll see more about that on GamingTrend.com. Then, so look look forward to that if uh, that sounds interesting to you. Another yeah, game on. y'all are excited to see is Catherine, which the only Catherine I know of is the video game Catherine. So uh, is this related to that? Um, uh, it, it is not. Okay. <laughs> is is the video game Catherine about the uh, the uh, uh, Catherine the Great, the Tsarina no. of Russia? No, no, yeah, yeah, no. no. Then, then it's got nothing in common with it. <laughs> okay. Absolutely nothing. Um. <laughs> so what is what is tabletop Catherine? So um, this is a game um, that is being published by Capstone Games. Uh, Capstone Games is yes, yes. He's got the hat. Uh, Rob Cap- rocking the Capstone Games hat. Yeah, gray and black. There you go. They're they're one of the hottest publishers in the U.S. right now. I would I would say they've. Um, Probably their most recent uh, big release was a game called Arc Nova, which I personally reviewed, um, and it's it's a great game. It's um, 
Ark Nova is about uh, like building a zoo and it has some like really interesting kind of card mechanics and tile laying mechanics and that sort of thing. This is not like that, but it's by the same publisher. And um, again, like it, this just kind of speaks to how diverse the tabletop gaming world is in terms of the kinds of themes that you see. This is a game about Catherine the Great, the Tsarina of Russia, <laughs> right? Um, you don't see too much of that uh, in mainstream video games, you know, stuff like that in mainstream video games, though you do see some breakthroughs, like, you know, who thought a game where you play a cat would be, like, as popular as it is right now, right? Um, but uh, I mean, but it is. I mean, after... after uh, what's, what's the one with... Uh, Untitled Goose Game? And goat oh, simulator yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, but that like, was still like an, that was, that was, yeah. That, I, I don't think that got to the level of hype that Stray did, though. Stray, uh, Stray from Stray's the gone, moment. Stray's gotten pretty big. <laughs> yeah, um, but but it, this this looks like a uh, you've got some uh, a little bit of area control. It looks a little more Euro style. Um, yep. I don't know. What do you what do you know about it? You're the Capstone fanboy, Rob. What what, what tell, uh, tell us about Catherine? I, I do like Capstone a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, no, uh, Catherine is it's it's got this new innovative card system which they haven't really talked too much about yet, but uh, it's supposed to change the way you kind of interact with the game and with the board. Um, it's for four players. It's about trying to uh, have the most favor of Catherine the Great by the end of the game. So I mean, uh. there's. So you're cu- calling, curring for favor. Yeah. So Sounds yeah. appropriate. It, it, nice. It's kind of cool. It's. I'm hoping we get to see more of it at Gen Con for sure. Um, I definitely want to see if we can't walk away with a copy of this just because of everything I've seen about it so far. It looks cool. Uh, yeah. Had a couple news posts about it. I mean, it, I just everything I've seen Capstone get their hands on has been nothing short of a success. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, other than Arc Nova, they came out with a game, uh, Watergate, uh, Pipeline. Um, uh, what are a few other big big games that they've had in the last couple of years, Rob? Uh, Curious Cargo, Boon Lake, which is one of right. those Alexand- Alexander Fister games. Yep. Um, what else? Uh, they, Cloud Age, which is another Fister. They, I mean... Capstone, just every everything they touch essentially kind of turns to gold a little bit. Um, another big one, which they had at uh, Origins, which I'm kind of interested to see them see what they have at uh, Gen Con as far as stock is uh, Clinic. Clinic was a big one that went over really well out there. Um, Corrosion, uh, New York Zoo is another one. Yep. Uh, they did. They published Maracaibo, Gaia Project, and Terra Mystica, which are pretty big. Um, they now have the IPs for those, so they produce those. Um, Coffee Traders is real big. So yeah, so so Catherine, different things. Catherine, the cities of the Serena is the full full name of the game. Um, it's. Uh, Capstone does work with quite a few uh, European designers, either yep. in bringing some of their games over uh, to an American audience or just, I think lately they've just been going, they've been bypassing that part and just saying, let's make a game together. And then it comes oh, yeah. out simultaneously in both markets. Um, and this That's, looks uh... like it's, it's one of those. Uh, this is definitely uh, a, a German designer. Uh, we've got some German designers working on this. Um uh, this is probably going to uh, be pretty hot at uh, the uh, the Spiel, the Essen Spiel, because uh, they do a. Uh, I, I think it's it was too late for this year because I think it was they announced their uh, big award winners uh, just a few like a week or two ago. But um, I don't think this one made the cut because it isn't out yet. But it, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this on some lists next year, uh, just based on Capstone's uh yeah. history uh, they 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 really are just like 
hitting home run after home run right now. And the, yep. the, for that reason alone, I'm interested in it. Um, just not, no, I mean, I, I think it's a cool theme. Don't get me wrong, but capstone it, it, it's, it's something I want to take a look at for sure. Can somebody tell me what this note means? Point solid with card color matching similar to Golem's books. Ah, oh. <laughs> what is that? <clears throat> okay. So, uh, um, point salad, uh, point salad is yes. Uh, the comment he's talking about was, yes, was, uh, geared towards Catherine. Yes. And what, what kind of game it is. Okay. I just, Yes. Yeah. Uh, little, point little point salad with color matching. Yeah. Yeah. No, that I was, was going to explain it. You've mentioned. So I was like, what, what does that mean? Um, Rob, how would you describe point salad? Like, I, I, I mean, no, that's pretty much when like during the whole game, you're trying, like the whole point of the game is to have the most points at the end. And what you do is you, you typically, you gather points along the way. And then you have like a bunch of end game, like some cards or something that you got at the beginning of the game that give you big point bonuses, depending on how you played. Like okay. if you do a, a bunch of this, you'll get like 20 more points, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, like that's point salad. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so yeah. those are, those are fun because, because you do have some, like uh, some kind of neck and neck, like uh, horse race cap- action during the, like the body of the game, but then yeah. the end of the game, like everything could just be completely overturned and uh, someone could sneak up from behind and you wouldn't even realize it. And it's, it's gotcha. like, what, you know? Um, but uh, Gollum's books, that's, that's Rob, that's the game that Dan played brought, brought to the, the table a few weeks ago. Right. Um, I believe it's, it's one in the same yet. Yeah, so I haven't I haven't played that yet. I'm not really sure. I haven't played Gollum uh, either. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, another one. But, it's not on our list, but I kind of want to bring up and talk about, which I'm sure Michael will agree is going to be pretty big. Um, they're just really showing it and demoing it at Gen Con. They just announced it in like the last couple of weeks. They're not really going to have a lot, um, or any copies really at Gen Con to to sell or anything but yeah. it's gonna be big going going into the into the next year and it's uh clank catacombs oh yes yes that's that's gonna be real big uh clank is one of those deck builder type games that i told you about that kind of um you have this whole dungeon everybody's trying to go down into the dungeon and they're trying to get in there and um trying to get treasures and get out of the dungeon before they get killed uh in the original clank it's by a dragon um, in Clank in Space, there is, I don't know, if, do you remember what's uh, trying to kill you in Clank in Space, Mike? The sun. But I actually haven't no, played <laughs> any of the Clank games, and oh, wow. I, I, I know, I, 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 what am I doing? I, like, oh. how can I even be lead tabletop editor if I haven't done well, that, right? I'll, I'll say this, <laughs> uh, Clank, the original Clank, is very much kind of like a gateway deck building game. Yes, I do uh, know that. In, into the hobby, it's it's very easy to get into and play and actually learn the hobby. But once you kind of are in the hobby, um, the original Clank kind of kind of uh, runs its course pretty quick. That's where kind of games like Clank in Space, uh, they have Clank Legacy, and then now um, Clank, Cata- Clank Catacombs. Now, I think uh, the Clank Legacy, uh, I think Clank Legacy was Ac- uh, Acquisitions Incorporated themed. So, uh, yeah. um, yes. you know, ties in with the, the Penny Arcade guys know all about this stuff. They, they have a, an Acquisitions Incorporated version of Clank out there, which is kind of cool. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at our schedule. I believe we actually have a, a full-on demo of Clank Catacombs, the newest game uh, that we're going to be uh, uh, taking a look at playing. Let's nice. see. Oh yes, Direwolf. Yes, we do. Yes. Yeah, I was like, that's Direwolf. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Direwolf is actually an interesting, a uh, very interesting company. They not only make tabletop games, they make digital versions of tabletop games. Um, oh. And we've uh, we've actually reviewed quite a few of them here at Gaming Trend over the years. Um, and uh, we've got 
we've got one that we're going to be uh, posting a, re a review of here in the in the coming week or so. Um, so cool stuff. Excellent. If, if you're ever interested in trying out some of these uh, wackier looking board games, you should check out some of the uh, the apps uh, for the digital versions. Yeah. That's uh that is uh pretty nice. I I do remember I don't remember the game I saw but I remember seeing on the Epic Game Store there is a digital board game I think that was either free or that they're selling on on the store and I was like, "Oh, this is becoming a thing now." I didn't realize tabletop oh, yeah. games were now going digital. So yep. I mean, for me, as a person who is like a diehard video games, like best entertainment medium ever to me, like that is another gateway where I might start getting into, you know, tabletop games. So seeing more digital versions of that, I'm like, oh, okay, if I can play it digitally, I wonder what it feels like physically. Like, I am one of those people. I think but one of the you... biggest pushes... Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike. Yeah. But did you know that table that video games originally were informed by tabletop games oh absolutely like those, oh, those yeah. old school rts absolutely. games those yeah, yeah. Those, those were board games first absolutely yeah. yeah i i do recognize that i'm not i'm not that ignorant about yeah. the influence oh, I, of tabletop. I wasn't trying to like you know put some shade on you or anything was, oh no no, you know, no, 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 no not no, a lot of people like my, my hell my kids didn't even know that they're like really and, Yes. Yes. That's yeah, why that's why the nerdiest of nerds were the ones that were playing the first video games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because for we sure. were already pushing plastic <laughs> on the table, right? Yeah. So. All, right. All right. Uh do you guys have any other games you want to talk about? Um Anything? So. No. There, yeah, there, there's so many that yeah, it's ridiculous. Like I said, we've got almost yeah. thirty meetings set up at this point. Yeah, um, and there's there's so many amazing games, and it's it the 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 tabletop game industry is really really just blowing up more and more every year. Um, I I I would say it's probably in a similar position that the video game industry was in about 15 years ago in terms of how mainstream it's becoming, um, how much attention is being put on it and, uh, how much money is being made in it. Uh, so, um, and it's pretty it is cool. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a great time to be a gamer. I can tell you that for sure. All right, so uh, before we wrap this up, when is Gen Con happening? Gen Con is happening. Um, it starts the uh, August 5th uh, and goes through the 9th. Uh, we'll be there all four days. Um, stay tuned to our YouTube channel uh, first. Um, I'll probably upload videos there first and then start building, uh, building out articles after. Um, but uh, and then keep an eye on our social media because we're going to post a bunch of pictures from the show. Uh, we're going to keep an eye out for uh, award people we hand out awards to. And um, yeah, it's going to we're going to have a blast. I can't wait. Yeah. Awesome. Also, uh, we have a discord. And yes. if you would like to do that, I know I again, I'm not a tabletop person, but I see all the time. Mike, Rob. Other people, they're always posting pictures of their tabletop stuff. So oh, if yeah. you're into, if you're listening to this, you're enjoying this, and you're into the tabletop stuff, and you want more people to enjoy it with, trust me, there are plenty of people in our Discord who will happily rejoice with what you got and talk about tabletop with you all yeah, day we, long if they if they can. So oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, we do can, have a dedicated uh, tabletop channel on Discord. Uh, yes. Feel free to hit us up. Uh, reach out to us if you got anything you you think want to want to see from Gen Con, especially let us know. Uh, hit our Discord. Uh, uh, hit us on Twitter. Um, you know, yeah, social media trend on Twitter. Yep. yep. Uh, the Discord link will be in the description uh, uh, for YouTube and also uh, linked in whatever podcast app you use. So that is our coverage for Gen Con. The 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 preview. Before it all goes down August 5th to, you said August 11th, was that? 9th. 
Fifth oh, okay. Okay. The best four days August. of gaming. Best four days. I made it yeah. six. It was so good. So I don't know uh, if I August. can handle that, man. <laughs> August <laughs> fifth, to August ninth, <laughs> will be the dates for Gen Con. You can expect all the coverage from Gaming Trend, covering as much as possible. Appreciate you listening. Appreciate you watching it. Watching, of course, you know, you, this is YouTube. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Yeah, if you don't like it, that's fine. That's fine. You can hit the dislike. That's okay. We want the engagement. Hit us up in the comments as well um either way my name is anthony that is mike dunn that is rob berg we'll talk to you later